So, um, what's uh, the starting point of uh, this uh, work, site specific? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the Bolenardini. The Bolenardini was uh, our first uh, inspiration. Uh, mm -hmm. We were invited to come and uh, and let the architecture and the environment to to inspire the work. And we didn't prepare so much. We wanted to really respond and uh, inhabit the place. That was the only concept we carry with us. Mm -hmm. We wanted to arrive and kind of take over the space and uh, see how can we dominate the space. And the concept really developed really fast. And uh, the trees, uh, the stairs, the water, all the natural elements around the bole also became very important. Why? The <laughs> Yes, it was a spontaneous reaction. We were, we felt the sort of futuristic approach of the architecture, but at the same time, the the combination with the natural environment around it, it made it feel like the trees grew after the building was there for a long time. So we started exploring this idea of being somehow from another generation, from another time, and we just said, oh, it looks like it's 3035. And from there it developed. And I think physically, it really created a sort of double layer of imagining in the future becoming, in a way, more animalistic, mm -hmm. but at the same time, something that would feel a little bit unhuman as well. So the dynamics were both inspired in animals, but at the same time, uh, some, somehow mechanic. So we were playing with these both ideas of how can we be both animalistic and sort of mechanical. Mm -hmm. Yes, the, indeed, to me, as public, mm -hmm. if, I, if I can, if I yeah. may, yeah, yeah, there is something primitive, primordial, mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, cruel also a little cruel. bit, yeah. probably. Or, yeah. Yeah. am yeah, I wrong? Way, we were imagining as well mm -hmm. what, how, what would we become, mm -hmm. in a way inspired of today, kind of imagining if we continue living in this way, mm -hmm. how are we going to be in 3035? So we were also talking about vulnerability, about fear, um, about community. So we're really a community and we learn our ways to communicate and, and somehow the audience become the intruders of our space, that which we protect. And, but at the same time, we're also, we have melancholy of the encounter, so there is also an ambiguity of our relationship to the audience. We're both scared of them, but at the same time, we're dying to connect. Mm -hmm. So we play with these ambiguities all the time. And what about the last uh, creation? The last image, yeah, the last yeah, image. The very, very deep, no? Very... Yeah. Fascinating, huh? Yeah, in a way it creates as different kinds of associations. Some people saw kind of organs or in a battle or we also felt like perhaps this could be our they could be our beds. Uh, if this is the environment we inhabit, we live outside in the day and we go up in the night to sleep. So what's the important thing, the most important thing uh, to you uh, for a dancer? Mm, I think the playfulness. Okay. I, I like to work with people that are also sensitive in human relations, mm -hmm. that uh, they listen to each other, they respect the mm -hmm. space, and they are also able to demand from each other, uh, to challenge each other, but at the same time to be careful and caring. Last question. Uh, how would you describe your, your dance, your... Um, if you can, eh? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, well, it's, I'm slowly describing it as relational bodies because uh, for me it's, everything is a relation. Um, we have our relations to our own body, the way we mm -hmm. relate to our body, mm -hmm. what we do to it, the way we listen to it. And we have a relationship with the space and with relationship with the environment, with other people. So I believe we are just relational bodies. Everything is relational. Thank you.